If you haven't noticed it by now, ATP comes up a lot, and with the muscles, even more so. Muscles, nerves, they both use enormous amounts of energy, and therefore ATP. I want to take a little bit of time to talk about redox reactions, because it's going to help us understand ATP and a few of its cousins, NADH, FADH2, this whole alphabet soup, and really get how these reactions work so that we're not just writing a bunch of acronyms, but really understanding what's going on. So what happens when you put energy into matter or some atoms? How about that little flashlight? That's what happens. The glow. That's one option anyway. We have to understand electrons. Here's what's going on. I just put energy, electricity from those batteries into the atoms that made up the bulb of that flashlight. What happened then is those electrons took on that energy and got really excited. They're just in this hyperactive state. But they can't stay up there forever, and so they basically fall back down into the, their normal resting state. But because energy has to go somewhere, formal concept is conservation of energy, then it was given off as light. The same concept applies to fireworks or firewood or food. So in a different sense, light energy comes in and strikes some atoms in a plant, that chlorophyll molecule, and those electrons go whoosh, and they get really excited. And the plant, instead of shining that light back out, it actually captures, it actually captures all that energy in the bonds of glucose, in the electrons that make up the bonds between the glucose molecules. We then eat that and extract it, which looks a little something like this. Here we have an organic molecule, something like glucose, with chemical bonds shown in yellow. Those would be made of electrons. And as those are extracted, the energy is captured in lots of ATP. All right, so we're extracting energy from glucose and we're putting it into ATP and a bunch of ATP, 30 or so ATP molecules, and it's stored there. But then it can transfer energy to do work like moving muscles, thinking thoughts, digesting food. Let's see how that works with ATP. So ATP alternates between two different forms, really. This one here, the reduced form, and this one down here, which is really two molecules, ADP, the D stands for di, two phosphates, and there's this separate one over here, that's the inorganic phosphate. And this bond right here, really all these phosphate bonds, are pretty fragile. They break easily. And when they do, they give off energy. And that's transferred to other molecules to drive reactions of some sort. Reactions that take energy. But when that bond is broken, then we end up with ADP again. So it gets recycled. We have to create other chemical reactions, like breaking down glucose that release energy, transfer that energy into ADP, and now we have ATP again. So it just keeps making this cycle over and over again, transferring energy to do work, and then getting recharged, and then transfers more, and then gets recharged. Well, when we extract energy from glucose to make ATP, this is not one big chemical reaction. It's a really long, slow, convoluted pathway that eventually results in carbon dioxide. Six of them, to be exact. Glucose is all broken up. And along the way, each little step transfers some electrons off and a little more and a little more and a little more, each time pulling little bits of energy out of that glucose few more calories every single time, and transferring them to ATP and other molecules too. So let's look at redox reactions specifically and how those help us accomplish this purpose. When we break down the term redox, it actually stands for two different chemical reactions. And they both have to happen together, reduction and oxidation, or to reduce and to oxidize. 
So reducing means you gain electrons, and if you gain them, then you had to have gotten them from somewhere else, and so the other thing must have been oxidized and lost electrons. Side note on this term, when something gets oxidized, it tends to be breaking down and becoming lower and lower in energy. So you may have heard of it in terms of rusting. So if iron oxidizes, it becomes rust. Uh, but also if we burn paper or wood or anything else, that's an oxidation process. The wood is getting oxidized, that energy is being given off. Those electrons are being pulled out and reducing something else. So reducing gaining electrons, it has more energy because more of those electrons with energy in them, oxidation or oxidizing is losing those electrons. If you see more oxygen in a molecule, that means it's been oxidized. So it typically anything with oxygen in it, a lot of it has less energy than a molecule with just carbon and hydrogen. As a really simple example, let's take sodium chloride, right? Salt, basically, salt ions. We have sodium and we have chlorine. And if we transfer an electron from sodium to chlorine, then this now has a positive charge. This one has a negative charge. They're ions, they get held together. But that transfer of electrons, now let's test ourselves. Sodium, did it get oxidized or reduced? Well, it lost an electron, so it got oxidized, this got reduced. Let's look at some more practical applications for energy transfer. So along with our familiar ATP cycle, we have a couple other electron carriers. I'll usually just refer to them as electron carriers. Uh, you know, they have these acronyms that go with them. We can look at their chemical structure. Well, here it is. So here are three major energy transfer molecules. Interestingly, they're all nucleotides, at least at their core. So we have ATP shown over here, and this is the same thing, ADP, and so is the part I've outlined over here. So that's the core of all of them. A lot of times we'll just symbolize ATP with something like this, something symbolizing adenosine and then the three phosphates, or simply this one. NADH symbolized usually with just some sort of acronym there. Uh, we get that from B vitamins, interestingly enough. So uh, that and FADH2 are both B vitamins. You've heard B vitamins give you energy. Well, they actually just help transfer energy around. So they are important, but they don't have calories. And there are a major three energy transport molecules we'll be talking about during cellular respiration. So all of these basically carry energy and then give it up. They just are energy transfer molecules. So along the top, these are the reduced forms, the ones with electrons, and then here are their oxidized forms. So same with ATP, right? We add energy and that bumps this up and then we give energy away to do work somewhere. And the same is gonna be true of these guys. This holds the electrons and it will give up the electrons. If we put a hydrogen with this form and add an electron, then it will hold on to it. And the same exact thing is true of the FADH2. So there they are, redox reactions. These are some of the gears that are gonna drive cellular respiration and especially the production of ATP so that our cells can do work.